Hello, everybody. Good morning. This is Charles Barnett from Apostolic Gatherings Network. May God bless you and keep you and just shower his love and his grace and mercy upon you in Jesus name. I have a very, very good and very important lesson today. Um, the title is Salvation and Responding Biblically. Salvation and Responding Biblically. This is a very um, awesome topic because it used to be a controversial topic, but now the Lord has been revealing and opening up um, understanding to many people worldwide. And so this lesson is starting to come out um, and it's a, uh, it's a blessing to everybody because even though it's challenging, it is biblical and it's God doing it to bring people to the complete flourishing of what salvation is and how to attain salvation and not how to um, fall short of receiving salvation. Excuse me. So I'm going to show you some scriptures and explain some things to you that's going to be extremely helpful. It was helpful to me and I know it's going to be helpful to you. And it's called salvation and responding biblically. Because that's what matters is to respond biblically. To have biblical salvation and to have a biblical experience of salvation. So that you have the hope and the eternal life biblical experience in Jesus name. Now, Mark chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 says... Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, Jesus is God incarnate, right? The word made flesh. He's God uh, walking around in human form. And he says, the first thing he says is we have to repent, then we have to believe the gospel. It's extremely important. And I'm going to show you a few scriptures so that um, it'll make sense to everybody. Because there are some people who will grab this scripture because it sounds good, but they won't take what was uh, established before uh, uh, for, by Jesus and then what is brought along and what we need to do is we need to tie it all together because that's exactly how it works. So he says the time is fulfilled. This is what has to be done. We need to repent and believe the gospel. Repentance means to turn away from our sinful ways. And then believing means it's an action of faith. So repentance is of a verb, an action word that we must turn away from our sinful ways to obey the gospel, to believe. Another uh, uh, verb, action word, is to believe what the gospel is, is the, what the gospel is and what it leads us to. So here's what we're going to cover today is the Bible never teaches that we are to accept Jesus as our personal savior, but it does teach that we are supposed to accept the fact that we are spiritually lost sinners in need of a savior. Now, this is what's been hotly debated for the last hundred years or so or more. And it kind of contradicts scriptures, but I'm gonna show you the scriptures um, and explain them to you. Now, before we do that, let's look at what this word accept means. It's very popular, accept the Lord as your personal savior and now you're saved, right? But does that the Bible was the Bible teach that? Well, no, it doesn't. It teaches that that is like an entry level of verb, because uh, accept is a verb. It's an action word, but it's not something that's totally all inclusive within itself. Now, the word accept, as they use this term, and uh, I remember uh, Francis Chan. He's a very popular pastor. A few years ago, he started to teach this. He says, this is something that's traditional. It actually is cliche, accept the Lord. You know, he always says, accept the Lord as your personal savior, but is it biblical? You know how he talks, he says that. And he comes and he teaches them that it's not, um, that it's not biblical and that what Jesus taught and what the apostles taught and what's taught and confirmed in the epistles is that we are supposed to repent 
and be baptized in Jesus' name and then receive the Holy Ghost. And that's what is supposed to be done. And that is the completeness, the complete action uh, to respond biblically for salvation. But I'm going to break it down because we all deserve to uh, um, know why. Why is it, right? And, and, and the person who coined that saying, we don't know why they did that. Maybe they didn't have the total revelation. Maybe they didn't have the whole Bible. I don't know the whole story. I'm not going to fault them for something that I really don't know the whole story. But I'm just saying that I've got the whole thing and I understand it. So I'm going to teach it to you because I want you to know. Jesus wants you to know. So accept is not a biblical phrase. So what we have to do is go back to what the Webster's Dictionary or Merriam's Webster's, whatever it is you want to use, it's all the same. Accept is a verb. It's an action word, which means, I'll read it to you. Accept, verb, to receive something or someone. It's the initial action of thought and of reaching out you receiving something or you're receiving someone. It means to recognize. Now you're beginning to recognize and accept and ponder. You're starting, it's, it's an action within yourself and within your body to move towards what's being presented. That's what it means. So let's change the term here so that it makes more sense. Instead of saying, we need to accept the Lord as our personal savior. We, let's look at it in a different view. Let's receive the Lord as our personal savior. Now it makes a whole different, uh, uh, whole different way, whole different meaning. Because in Acts chapter two, it does say, and they received the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues as the spirit gave them the utterance, the ability. So let's look at that, receive. Okay, because those people, they already had accepted the Lord. They had spent three and a half years with the Lord and still they had to receive something. So to accept the Lord as your personal Savior and now you're saved is all inclusive, is not biblical at all. As a matter of fact, it's really misleading. But it does have some truth in it because you, we, you and I do have to start to make a conscious action toward receiving the Lord. So you have to receive the Lord. And that's what it is. It's an action. So let's, let's look what the Bible says. How do, how do you receive the Lord as your personal Savior? How do you receive salvation? How are you supposed to respond to it biblically and not just a cliche or traditionally, like Francis Chan said, you know what we're doing, what we've been doing for so long, it's, it's cliche, it's not even biblical. So he doesn't teach that no more. He teaches his people uh, the way to receive the Lord is to do exactly what the Bible says. And I'm going to show that to you so that you can experience the fullness of salvation and not just a thought of something that is making you to feel like you've got something that you may not really have. And we want you to have it, right? Because Jesus did not say, accept me as your personal savior and now you're saved. Things Jesus never said. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And then you're on your way to being saved because he didn't stop there. He says some more. So I want to show you. I want to show you the whole thing so you can have the whole thing because you and I got to have the whole thing. All right. And I'm so excited and privileged to share this with you because I want you to have it. Jesus wants you to have it. He didn't bleed his blood and die and, and raise from the dead for nothing. Praise God. So Jesus preached that we must repent, which means to stop. It's another action and turn away from our sin. Another action. He also said to believe the gospel. Remember, we've got to receive it and believe it. We've got to ingest it. That would, and what is that? What does that mean? It means to have faith in his finished work at Calvary and his resurrection from the dead. In other words, he, I'm a sinner. That's what I got to accept. I got to accept and receive the fact that I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're lost. We are born in sin. We are, our Adamic nature is headed to hell and that's where we're headed. No matter how good we are, we have the sinful nature. So we must be born again. We must be born of the water and the spirit to be born out of that Adamic nature of sin and, and move into eternal life. 
and receive and put on Christ. All right? So that's what do we do? We got to believe in the finished work of Christ. In other words, yes, it was my, I was supposed to die. I'm supposed to be banished. I'm supposed to go to hell forever. But Jesus took my place. He died. He bled the sinless blood that paid the price for my sin so that I can be saved. I got to believe in that. I got to I got to move towards that. I can't just say, "Okay, I believe, now I'm saved." No. You got to start to move. You got to start to act. Your body your body's got to assume the posture of change. We've got to be changed and we've got to move in faith. It's all verbs and action. So what do we do? How do we do that? Here's what we do. Mark chapter 16, just what Jesus said. Remember he said, repent and believe the gospel. That's the beginning of Mark. Now he finishes Mark with this. Acts Mark 16, 15 through 16 he says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to everybody. Red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in his sight. You don't care about nationality. Humans, preach to humans. No matter what they look like, preach to them. He wants them saved too. Just like he wants us saved. He who believes, see now right here, look at, remember he said repent and believe the gospel. Now he's showing you another thing. There's, there's another part. See, because you just can't uh, accept the Lord. I believe he died for my sins and now I'm saved. And I got the Holy Spirit. That's not biblical. You're on your way, but that's not all inclusive. Because look, he says, repent, turn away from our sinful ways. Because I've seen people do that and they go and live like the devil. And, and, and they ain't saved. I'm sorry, they're not. But this is how you get saved. And this is how you stay saved. Watch. He says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. That's what it says. Go look it up in your own Bible. Open up your Bible app. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. He who believes, he doesn't say he who believes is saved. Because that's what they teach, right? They take scriptures out of Romans chapter uh, 10 and, and they uh, make it say what it doesn't say. Now I'll cover that right now to show you, okay? Because I'm not afraid to cover this. I'm going to show you it and explain it to you correctly. We're supposed to respond biblically. Salvation, responding biblically, okay? He says, he doesn't say he that believes is saved. Jesus said he that believes and is baptized. That means being dunked under the water and, and the person baptizing you proclaims the name of Jesus Christ. If you want it in Hebrew or Jewish, Yeshua HaMasiah, that's Jesus Christ, right? Because that's how they got baptized in the first century because it started with Jews. So they were uh, Yeshua, okay? That's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Yesuluka, whatever language it is, as long as the name of Jesus is pronounced, because he's the one who bled the blood. It's his name that has all authority and power in heaven and earth. All right? Now, so he says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. So he says, repent, believe the gospel, and now you got to be baptized. All right? So it's a lot more action and verbs, action words, than just accepting. See, let's change that word accepting to receive. Because receive is a little bit more, it brings it out to us that when you receive something, you've actually got to go and get. you got to reach out and do some action, okay? That means you got to step into the water to be baptized, right? When the Bible says we're saved by faith and not by works, that word works is talking about the works of the law of Moses. It's not talking, it's not negating the works in that you've got to move your feet to get into the water to be baptized in Jesus' name. It's not negating the works that you got to do what they did in the, in the book of uh, Acts and throughout the epistles that they got to re uh, reach out to God and call on the name of Jesus and pray to receive the Holy Spirit speaking with other tongues. Those are actions of grace. Though That is the works and operation of grace. That is works of faith. That is exactly how it's supposed to be taught. And that's exactly how Jesus taught it. And that's the true mode of salvation. So believe and be baptized and then you'll be saved. Well, let's look at something. Let's take a quick pause here. Where's that doctrine come from about accepting? They pulled it from uh, Romans chapter 10. And now we got to understand something. 
the Romans, they were already saved. They had already repented. They had already believed the gospel. They had already been baptized in Jesus' name. They already, you know, had received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. They are already being mentored by the Apostle Paul and other apostles. So he, when he was saying this, he wasn't going through the whole entire thing because he knew that they, they already knew what he was talking about. So he was just breaking this down and explaining to them why it was so important to understand this concept of salvation. Look what he says here. He says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt, and I'm using the King James Version because I want you to know exactly how it was said in the original before all the other versions started to take their shot at it, all right? He says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, the humanity of him raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, shalt means you're on your way. It doesn't say you're saved right then and there. It means you're on your way. You shall be saved. You're in the process of it because the Apostle Paul was not negating what Jesus said. He was breaking, trying to break it down and get us to understand what was said. So he says, if you will, you got to believe in your heart. You just something that you got to receive. And I'm not going to read it to you, but he goes on to say, how can anybody even start this if they don't hear preaching? And how can they even hear preaching if nobody is sent to him? It's so important. All these little steps of the operation and works of salvation. So what he says here, if you start to believe and understand what Jesus said, you shall be saved. You're on your way. Look, he's going to say it some more. Right? He says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. People that just, oh, I believed in my heart, and that's good. No, your mouth has got to say something. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, I'm sorry. I believe, Jesus. Fill me with your spirit. Because the Bible says if you ask him for the Holy Ghost, he'll fill you with it. There's all those scriptures that got to be taken into account because it all means something, right? He's, he says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And here's the scripture that they hang it all on. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto them, all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what they say. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus. Okay, you're saved. No. He doesn't say that. He says, shall be. In other words, you're on your way. That, I know that's what happened to me. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. And then I received the Holy Ghost. I started speaking in tongues. Of course, it was like in the infant stage, I was saying D, 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 D. Sound like I was saying a hundred Ds. Now I speak in tongues. It sounds like a foreign language, right? A heavenly language. But that's what happened. And then after that, I didn't stop there. I wanted to get baptized in Jesus' name. And then they baptized me, just like Jesus said, repent, believe the gospel, be baptized, right? Receive the Holy Ghost. You call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. It's going to happen if you give. Hey, what he's saying here is your mind and your heart and your body have got to be in it 100. That's what the scripture is saying. This has got to be a 100% action. You can't just sit there like a bump on a log. You just can't sit there all silent and just saying, I'll get to it one of these days. Absolutely not. We have got to be vocal. We've got to be a person of action. We've got to believe and you've got to receive. Right? We've got to receive it. Accept means to receive, to recognize and go after it. Right? Let me read the rest. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And that's the part I told you about, right? And somebody that's sent. Because how are you going to even get baptized in Jesus' name after you called on him? Unless somebody baptizes you. See, so that's exactly how it should be taught. That's incongruent with all the other scriptures. 
So just accept the Lord as your personal Savior and now you're saved and you don't have to do anything else is, is not true. It's misleading. It's not biblical. It's not biblical teaching or doctrine. It's, um, it's somebody else's uh, traditional way of thinking. Uh, it's somebody else's uh, uh, thought process that wasn't backed by the Bible. The Bible teaches that we are to repent, we are to believe, and we are to be baptized, and we are to pursue until we receive the Spirit of God and then walk in newness of life. We don't just stop there. We continue the action of making the change. Because we weren't people of prayer, now we're going to become people of prayer. We weren't people of fasting, now we're going to become people of fasting. We weren't people of the word, and now we're going to become people of the word. We were people that were moving in the works of the flesh, and now we're going to put on Christ so we can uh, begin to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in our life. So it's action, 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 action of grace. Let me move on. I just wanted to cover that for you so you can understand, because many of us, uh, we started off like that, but we never received the Holy Ghost or we never got baptized in Jesus' name. And that's what you and I have got to do. We got to finish the process. We got to finish obeying Jesus. So what else do we got to do? That's why the very first preaching of the Ecclesia, the church movement, was in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 41. And the apostle Peter said, he preached to them, you crucified the Almighty, he was in human form. You crucified the Lord from heaven. And man, all those Jews that were there for the day, uh, day the Feast of the Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, they were cut to their heart. Oh man, what are they doing now? They're, they're boom, they're receiving. Now they're accepting. They're accepting the Lord. They're receiving the Lord, right? They're receiving the gospel. Let's see what they do. This is how they finish the verb. Acts 2, 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, that means Matthew was there too, right? Because he wrote and John was there, right? They wrote those other epistles. Peter said and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, that said, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent. Wait, wait, wait. He didn't say, accept the Lord as your personal Savior and you're all good. He didn't say that. Right? He says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, washing away and forgiveness of your sins. That's what Jesus said. Repent and believe the gospel. Right? He said, preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Peter also says in one of his epistles, I think it's uh, 1 Peter can't remember what chapter it is, but he says baptism does now also save us. It gives you a clean conscience and a new birth experience. All right. So this is what all has to be done, folks. This is how we got. This is what we got to do. This is salvation responding biblically. Now, he says and you shall receive, after you're baptized in Jesus' name, he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I received it first, then got baptized. You know, however, as long as it gets done. He also says this, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's the word, folks. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Wait a minute here now. Here they heard the preaching. They accepted. They received. They said, what do we got to do? He says, repent, be baptized. You got to receive the Holy Ghost. Then he's testifying to them. And he says, be saved from this generation. So if they, all they had to do was accept and, and, and they were saved, then why is he telling them to be saved? Why is because there's still some things they got to do. Now they've heard, now they know, they've asked and he gave them the answer. Now they got to do it. It's time to take action. So what happens here? Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added unto them. So salvation, responding biblically. After you've heard the preaching, after you 
accept and receive the gospel, then we've got to repent, then we've got to believe, and our faith has got to take action upon the finished work of Calvary, and we've got to get baptized in Jesus' name. The preacher has to pronounce the name of Jesus Christ because it's the name that has the authority. It's the name that activates the blood. It's the name of the person who bled the blood. Hallelujah. I felt the Holy Ghost in that. We've got to be baptized in Jesus' name and we've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And everybody in the Bible that received the Holy Ghost, they, there was an evidence that followed by speaking in other tongues. And then they continued to walk in newness of life. And the Bible says, hey, if you can go all the way down and look at, at um, the verse, chapter 2, we read it, in uh, verses 42 and on, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teachings, right? Prayers from house to house, breaking of bread, fellowship. Um, that's what they did. They prayed, prayed, prayed. They followed the apostles as the apostles followed Jesus. So that's how we respond biblically to salvation. We have got to finish. For those of us who have accepted the gospel and accepted the Lord as a personal savior, but you never got baptized in Jesus' name. Maybe you were baptized, and but they didn't say the name of Jesus. You gotta be baptized, and they, someone's gotta pronounce the name of Jesus Christ upon you. It's gotta be the name of Jesus. Maybe you haven't received the Holy Ghost like the Bible teaches of speaking with other tongues. You've gotta do that. You've gotta take action. He Be saved from this crazy, evil, wicked world. You've gotta do it. That's biblical salvation responding biblically and receiving full salvation. We've got to repent, we've got to be baptized, we've got to receive the Holy Ghost, and we've got to continue in the apostles' teachings. That's what it means to biblically receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive salvation. That's what we've got to do in your mind and heart and in your body, your body, soul, and spirit completely whole. Brought out into newness of life, now under the lineage of Jesus Christ and your home and your destination and your end game is eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ. So that is how you and I are supposed to biblically accept, receive, respond, and be saved. Repent, believe be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and then obey the Bible, change the lifestyle, and walk in faith according to the scriptures. Walk in prayer. Teach the gospel. Preach the gospel in Jesus' name. Be a prophetic, apostolic disciple of Jesus Christ like they were in the New Testament, the early church. And that's what we've got to do. So let's pray right now so that you will have your understanding open and that you will be moved to take action and finish the verbs, finish the action words. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, receive the gospel, receive this truth, receive this biblical uh, uh, revelation, receive it in the name of Jesus. We declare it and decree it unto you. Receive your salvation in fullness, Follow through with repentance. Follow through with your faith in believing. Follow through and be baptized in Jesus' name. Follow through and receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Follow through and live a life of prayer and obedience to the Word of God. In Jesus' name, all deception, all lies, all demonic influence, everything be broken and loosed from you so that you can be uh, 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 moved in the Holy Ghost to... Finish this work of faith in your life. In Jesus' name, be loose, be set free, be enlightened, uh, receive revelation, receive the gospel, and be saved. Be motivated to move out and finish this thing and be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sebo Sheba Kama Shebata. In Jesus' name, I pray. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Don't forget to make this your top priority because salvation is priority number one in Jesus' name. God bless you. This is Charles Barnett from Apostolic Gatherings Network and you be blessed and you be saved and you complete it in Jesus' name. Obey Jesus and get baptized. 
obey Jesus and receive his spirit in Jesus name. God bless you. You be blessed and go get saved in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto Jesus.